It's time for the Take a Seat podcast. I'm your host, Kevin Howell. Please take a seat. Right. Good morning, Brandon. Alas, uh, good to have you on the show. This is Take a Seat TV. And this morning, we've got Brandon Alas from New Human Transformation Clinic, an amazing entrepreneur. I've spent some time in, uh, with him over the last year. It's just been, uh, every conversation has been a revelation and really inspiring. Good to have you here, Brandon. Welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Honored to be on your show. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Great. So, Brandon, you know, Take a Seat's all about purpose, passion, using your talents, creating opportunity with what you've got, and then getting into the flow of business. And you're a fantastic entrepreneur. You've built a fantastic business. And I want to know all about that. So, um, But before we start with that, uh, I, I hear there's some peculiar behavior, daily behaviors that you've got and that you want to, like I've heard from people that, that you've got some odd things that you do in your daily routine. And I'd like to hear about that because I, I suspect there's something in there for other people as well. So talk about that. Your, your, your. Yeah, um, I've, been, I've been told it's very peculiar, but um, I found that, you know, every day, uh, is an important day to live successfully. So there, there are some peculiar things I do. Um, my morning starts off with a, a standard alarm system, you know, with the touch button. Um, right. My cell phone is the one you can is the one you can snooze. Is, is there a snooze oh, button? Yeah, that's, that's the one. <laughs> um, the reason for this is, Kevin, because generally, you know, people set their alarms on their cell phones. And when they do this, um, they tend to switch their alarm off, pick up their phone, and um, you know, read a WhatsApp message or 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 answer an email. For me, this right. is I don't want to be reactive in the morning. I want to be proactive. So Love the moment it. I'm reactive Love and I'm answering questions already first thing in the morning, um, I'm already on the back foot. It sets the tone for the day. I want to be on the front foot. So yep. what I do is uh, the, the cell phone stays in the kitchen. And I wake up to, well, now a stunning new alarm, which a friend of mine bought me, which creates like a, a special ambient light. <laughs> wow. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Is it like the sun yeah. coming up in the morning out from, from, the, yeah. from, the, from, the, from the east? <laughs> <laughs> Bring, brings a lot of calm in the morning. Um, okay. So, yeah, and, and, and I think this is important for a lot of people because too many people are reactive in the morning. You need to be proactive. So from, for, from there, I sort of sit up on the side of my bed and I spend, spend a short little two to three minutes just visualizing my future self, my future health, my future wealth. The importance of this is astronomical. People should okay. be focused on visualizing, you know, where their life needs to go. You need to have a destination. You know, it's so important. So there's a, yeah, there's a lot of visualization. You can honestly tell people you need to be crystal clear about where what you are visualizing because if there's any blurriness in there, you won't know if you're succeeding or if you're failing. And that's important. There has to be clarity. Love it. So I spend a lot of time, uh, two to three minutes. Um, I visualize my future self, health, and wealth. Um, and from there, I get up. Uh, I go to the bathroom and I activate what I call the, the vagus nerve. All right. And this nerve, the way I activate it is by getting into an ice cold shower. I do this winter and summer. Wow. Yeah. The reason for that is I think you, I think you I think you you lost ninety percent of our audience now. You said a cold shower in in winter is the, is the cold shower in winter. Is that what you said? <laughs> Absolutely. Cold shower in winter. Cold shower in summer. Uh, um, right. The reason I do this, uh, number one, obviously, um, it's something I don't want to do. And the fact that I do it, you know, it really promotes, you know, some love it. But, but nonetheless, um, the, the medical benefits are, are, are rather outstanding. Um, for one, when you, when you have a cold shower and that cold water hits the back of your head and your neck and your back, you are really raising the vagal tone of this vagus nerve, which connects to all your organs. It reduces inflammation. Um, it's a really nice biohack because not only does it reduce inflammation, but it reduces anxiety and depression. So it really gets the parasympathetic 
system in the autonomic nervous system calm and relaxed. Right, um, right. So it sort of prepares me for the day. Um, yeah, love that. And then from there, I walk to the kitchen. And uh, in my kitchen, I have all the minerals that I require. As you know, in human, we have a powerful mineral test that we do. We can determine what minerals are lacking in the body and in what ratios. So from there, I take the minerals that I require. Um, yeah, I walk to work. And work is an incredible thing for me. I'm blessed to be a part of saving lives, optimizing human beings. I spend a lot of time motivating my staff. Um, one of the most important components to success is not that success is a destination, but a lot of people see it as a destination. Um, I prefer the understanding that success is something you live daily. You live successfully every day. Right. And you can understand that and implement that in your life and you're optimizing and you've got to be a better person than you were yesterday and you're continuously optimizing your life every single day and living successfully every day. You don't need to look at it as an end term product as I will become successful. Right. So it's really similar to happiness in fact. Happiness is a process practice. You know, practice well. You need to practice the manual. Right. Every Got Everybody it. has a manual, but nobody practices the manual. Right, yeah. right. From home, go home right. after, yeah, after a good day at work, um, I have a little jar uh, on my kitchen table. Uh, and on the side of the jar, it says horse on it. <laughs> and, right. Yeah. And what I do is I sit in front of the jar and I've got a little notepad. So I, wrote, I write down one thing in the day that I really thought was awesome. And Amazing. I throw it in. Yeah, I actually throw well, it in. It was five years. So you can imagine this jar uh, is pretty full at this stage. So yes. my wife was this to me, maybe you should get a bigger jar. And I said to her, no, man, I love shoving more awesomeness into the jar of awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff it in there. Yes, I like it. <laughs> yeah. well, what really does is it, it, every time I see the jar, it just promotes my gratitude for life. Uh, life is an incredible gift. I mean, it's an incredible thing that atoms have come together to ponder their own origin. I'm fascinated by the design. I'm fascinated by life itself. So it just keeps me grateful uh, for my journey. Right. Um, right. I have a lovely dinner with my wife. We don't talk business at home. It's against the law. And uh, <laughs> from there, we, um, I have a, an entrance to my bedroom via my garden as well. So I always take that little route because a lot of people may have this, like, you know, you have a rough day and you tend to question what's it all about. You know, what's what's the life, world? what's this life all about? And what I do is I call stargazing, all right? I, I look up at the stars, I see myself, I zoom out and I see the clouds pass, I see the moon pass, I see the universe in its full beauty right. and I feel connected for that moment. I start realizing more, you know, what, what the connection to the universe. And I think it's an incredible thing. And yep. you start realizing then what it's all about because there's so much more to it, you know. Um, from there, I go so much, so much more than your, your, your daily business problem. Yeah, exactly. Um, for my final process of the day, um, or my final meditation of the day, I'm back on the edge of my bed um, and I practice a meditation called the power of gone. Um, and what this is really is one deep breath, think about the thing that you mostly want out of your life and then as you breathe out, you let it go. And if I can give anybody advice, because everybody always says, I don't have time to do any form of meditation. One breath is not going to take much time. No. And believe me when I tell you, one breath will eventually become two, and then three, and then four. And you'll start getting used to it, and it will start becoming a very important part of your life. And then I go to bed, right. sleep, and I repeat the same process you had the following day. I love it. I love it. Excellent stuff, Brennan. Now, Brennan, um, so, I mean, I've, I've taken notes on some of those things. I'm going to start doing that. I think the one I'm going to struggle with is the cold shower in winter. 
The rest sounds okay to me. I love the the awesome uh, jar. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to start that with my family. I think yeah. it's a great idea. So, so Brandon, just tell us quickly in in a minute, like what does New Human Transformation Clinic do? Like for just for those people who've never heard of it, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard of you, but there might be some people who haven't. Just what like what is what's the focus for you in business? What are you trying to achieve? Right. So, so New Human is a it's a transformation clinic. Um, it's a platform that we built for people that are looking for true and permanent change, both physically and mentally. Um, we, we provide an environment that that people can relate to, and that really provides them with an opportunity to what I call inner engineer. You know, have data on the type of testing we do on their own bodies, and they're able to right. implement self self help. Right. It's a new line of medicine called lifestyle medicine. It's there. Right. We, we provide very specific scientific testing that's done in the USA. Um, and this type of testing reveals very relevant information about the current state of your body. And yeah. of course, we work with that and with you, we have a training component uh, in our clinics. And of course, we have a neuroplasticity component, a neurogenesis component. Um, we have implemented low-level lasers while these people train to enhance, you know, brain function, uh, reduce inflammation, um, improve their depression and anxiety. Um, so it is a these clinics. We're opening up fifty clinics across the country. We well have done. currently four in operation, um, and of course, you know. Our main view and vision is to raise conscious awareness and save as many lives as we possibly can. Get. Got it. Love it. And if I look at those pictures behind you, Brandon, are those some of your clients? Because I, I see some real transformations behind you, and they're quite clear on the picture. Um, so, 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 that, so that's obviously the before and after. Is, is that what, what happens to people? Because I've seen some of these photographs, and it's really a life-changing event that happens to those people. So just talk about some of the successes you had around weight loss and also transformation about, you know, the, um, the, the transforming of the mind, because I, I, I see that happening in your environment a lot, where people go from feeling one way to feeling another a couple of months later. Yeah, so, so, so this wall is, is actually my wall of inspiration. Um, I, wow. Uh, yeah, I like to look at this every day. It's in my office because, you know, when I see these, these people's lives that, that we've changed, it really motivates me to get better at my job. You know? um, Love it. I can honestly say it's an incredible process. Uh, there, yes, people lose weight, but that's mainly due to um, the body reaching homeostasis, We've improved, you know, energy profiles in the human body. We've improved the intracellular uptake of nutrients in the body. Um, we have a very futuristic point of view that nutrient is important, but just as important as the uptake, you know, of intracellular nutrients and the ability to uptake that efficiently. So we, right. we, we're trying to look at the long-term view of, of where the concept of nutrition and diets are going. And, and really focusing on the human body and the optimization of, of the human body. Obviously, the neurogenesis component, you know, when the human body changes, a lot changes, hormones change. Neurotransmitter function, norepinephrine, serotonin, dopamine, all these levels change. Um, and we right. need to be prepared for those states. You know, once we prepare for them, we aid people, um, improving cell permeability, improving you know, uh, like I said, neurogenesis, we have tools for these things. We're up to date with a lot of the stuff going on in, in the United States, in these type of laboratories. We have a brilliant team of doctors and specialists and scientists that work with us. Incredible well human beings for help. Uh, to, to, if I may, uh, Dr. Susan an incredible woman, um, been on many TV channels uh, discussing cell biology. We have her with us. Um, and we're, we're building some serious some, some, some frontier science here. Love it. And, and Brennan, when you always talk about the, the medical side to all of this, I, I know that you're busy with controversial things, and, and I know it's totally against what, what, what the traditional medical school of thought is. So talk to us about that, that conflict at the moment, what's going on in the world, you know, the two different thought patterns, because 
Uh, I know from from my history that you know I I ran out of doctors to see um, around what what was wrong with me, and when I came to see you the first time, you said, well, you know, this is, I'm just going to take a completely different view on this, and I was so shocked that there was a different view on this. So just talk to us about the differences in in thought pattern there. Well, absolutely. I mean, first of all, um, we do work with some incredible integrative and functional doctors um, that, that really have out-of-the-box thinking um, and have time uh, to work with their patients. The biggest problem we have in the medical industry is the lack of time. The system has caused the problem where people, you, you know, they, they can't get the effective treatment they need because it's a very one-dimensional process. You know, at human we do offer you know, blood work, we do a variety of testing from mineral analysis to amino acid, organic acid profiling, um, we do fecal testing, urine testing. We look at a whole host of tests. Um, but it's important to understand that the system, I think, at this stage um, is under fire you know, from the medical perspective because they're very, there's constraints and they have to work in those constraints. It's not always the doctor's fault. I think just the system needs to be upgraded, it needs to be better because there are alternatives. There are other fantastic and brilliant tests that people can do that can provide them with data on their bodies and they can they can yep. introduce this lifestyle medicine. You know? Yes, got it. Mm -hmm. And Brandon, what was interesting to me, and, and you can talk, uh, I suppose you can talk for hours on this, uh, is what, when, I, when I got to you and I spoke to you about health and, and, and diets and, and so forth, and I said, maybe it's sugar or maybe it's starch or maybe, maybe it's meat. And, and you stopped me right there and said, no, it's, it's none of that. It's, it's never any of that. Like it, you took an interesting view on, we, it's almost like you said, stop being angry at food. It's not food's fault. Uh, and I, I love that because I, I meet so many people that are angry at food, like they like conscious, con constantly thinking, I can't eat that, I can't eat this, I, I can't have that, I can't in indulge in that. And and you have a completely different view on that. And I was, I, mean, I just tell us about that. What you like? What how? What got, what got you to that process of thinking? Right. So, so I've done some studies with a lot of doctors, specifically uh, Dr. Susan Lehman on intracellular biology, and um, <clears throat> I think. The world is changing. You know, people revert to nutritionists and, and dietitians, um, you know, to determine what type of food is best suited for them. Um, and, and unfortunately, you know, the world we live in, people are always going to cut costs. Food is invariably going to get worse. You're going to find food with more antibiotics, more hormones. You know, it, it's, it's going to get worse in time to come. So the, the future of health and wellness when it comes to food is to optimize the intracellular nutrient uptake pathways in the human body. So in other words, if carbohydrates are affecting you, we need to look at why that's happening. Is it the glucose metabolism cycle? Is there faults in the Krebs cycle? Is there, are there other problems you know, within the system that are, that are causing carbohydrate damage you know, to your body or raising that inflammation? Is there enough insulin right. being secreted? Is there enough insulin being inhibited by the body? So it's important to, to know that it's the optimization of these pathways, you know, that we need to be focusing on going forward. I think that's where the science is, is um, and that's where we need to focus on, you know, is to be able to provide people with tests that tell them, listen, you have poor digestive enzymes. Your protein synthesis is not working. You're driving up ammonia intracellularly in the cells. You're converting a cell from an alkaline to an acidic state, and this is creating a decrease in cell permeability. And when this happens, you know your protein is actually poisoning. So wow. we need that is where the future of, of, of nutrition, in my opinion, is, and it is my opinion. But we are we have tests where we can look at these options, and of course the results are undeniable. We have the results, yep. we have documented results, well over 280 human beings that have lost in excess of 25 kilograms. I mean, these are incredible results. And, and they come mm -hmm. primarily from optimizing the energy pathways in the human body. We need to understand that food is going to get worse. And the people who are going to live the longest are people who can pick up the nutrients from any type of food. Yeah, no, that was that was going to be my next question because one of the things you said to me was, you know, food's not going to change. Uh, you know, we we're trying our damnedest worldwide to 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 change the foods, but it's not going to. You know, people, the, our populations are increasing. 
uh, we have less land to work on. You know, people are just going to use a lot of more, a lot more bi- um, antibiotics and chemicals in the food. It's never going to change. So we need to find new ways of of utilizing food. I think that's what you're saying. Is that right? Absolutely. That's absolutely yeah. the case. Right. All right, Brandon. And then also, what was interesting about the uh, the journey uh, with you was that um, it also it, it, it's a build up after many years of abuse, or basically uh, bodily abuse. That's that's what causes it. And and when, and when I got to you initially, you said to me, well, "Look, this is not going to be sorted out in a month. This this is going to take time." So it, your your body obviously has been abused, and it's been been abused for many years over like a twenty or thirty year process of eating the wrong things or stressing too much or maybe your environment is wrong and that causes all of this so you know how do you guys approach that part of that because obviously it's a clinic you come there and it's a perfect environment when you're there what is your approach to helping that person with with their environment i think it's it's important for us to understand because not a lot of people realize the effect of let's use the word stress on 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 the human system i mean a lot, a lot of youngsters nowadays have anxiety and depression. And, you know, these, this does cause problems to, you know, the thyroid function, to adrenal function. You know, these organs are overworked as a result of the, the stress, you know, of, of success in the modern day. You know, stress causes inflammation. Inflammation causes disease, cancer, heart disease, diabetes. These are inflammatory type diseases. You know, um, right. it's important that people stop teaching their kids about these diseases, about inflammation, and living that lifestyle where they're continuously focused on reducing inflammation in the body. Because you're going to live yeah. longer, and you're going to age slower as a result of that. Okay? Right. Well, right. There are certain fundamental things that you need to get to, to to keep inflammation under control. Right? right. We know that the effect of the environment in every genetics regulates gene expression. It changes it. It upregulates or downregulates, causes you know protein uh, proteins that, that produce different chemical pathways that change different things in the body. So we know that our environment plays a fundamental role on, on our health. Okay. Right. So there are certain things you should be doing every day. Um, for example, Quality sleep, sleep over quantity sleep. People always go, I need eight hours of sleep. No, you need deep sleep. Deep sleep is what reduces inflammation. You need to be focused on ban aiding your emotions. There needs to be work done with our young children so that they can, we can work on these kids to make sure that there's no emotional damage at a young age. All right. This is so important. 90%, 90% of disease starts in the mind and manifests in the body. We need, these people need help. We are too far behind from a mental perspective. All right. Right. And and, and in order for us to get our emotions under control, to to deal with stress better, we're going to reduce inflammation. We can see this in the test that we do. We can actually see how the sodium potassium pump gets affected. We can see the levels of aldosterone and cortisol in the body to determine how bad is this person, you know, what, how, how much damage is there in the parasympathetic or sympathetic system, in the autonomic nervous system. And then we can make the necessary adjustments. We can help people deal with stress better. And this is fundamental in longevity. Right, right. So, so Brandon, I'm really interested in around that as well. You know that I work with entrepreneurs and especially in the later later part of their life when they move into a position where they're looking at, at uh, well, they've achieved some sort of success and they're moving into an area of significance or they want to move into an area of significance. So, and you're an entrepreneur as well. Just talk to us about the, you know, the the, the, the benefits to health when you're an entrepreneur and also the, the, the counter to that. Like, how do you put your life together if you don't have your health as an entrepreneur and how that affects your day-to-day walk in life if you don't have a, a, a healthy body and healthy mind. Kevin, I can honestly tell you, I have, I have well over a hundred highly successful entrepreneurs at these clinics because the importance of self-optimization, self-healing, um, lifestyle medicine is fundamental 
is fundamental in making better decisions in your life. And being a great entrepreneur is all about making great decisions. You need to be able to predict the future and work towards that future effectively. And the only way you can do that is if you have fantastic neurotransmitters and they're functioning correctly and they're, they're communicating correctly and the mineral levels are correct. You need to know that, you know, training as well as a huge component. The best days either end or start the training. It's fundamental in an entrepreneur's life. These people who drive our economies, they need to be optimized. They need right. to have, yeah, they, they need to be influencing society in a very positive way. Um, so it's essential. It is absolutely essential. I cannot tell you, when they first come to me, they all have adrenal burnout, all of them. They all have wow. underactive thyroids. All right, they're all struggling with severe hypertension, all of them. And once we start turning things around, these guys start becoming 10 times more successful. I just had a, wow. a, another jet the other day. Thank you for helping me make him another couple of million. It was, it was wonderful. And it's incredible. Wow. People right. need to right. understand the importance of self-optimization. Definitely. Okay. Got it. So what you're saying is an entrepreneur, if, you feel, if you're around 40, 45 to 50 year old and you feel stuck in your job, more than likely, you're stuck in your mind. There's, 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 there's something that's wrong that needs to be reset. And it's probably happening from your mind onwards. It's, it's moving into your body from, from the mind. Is that what you're saying? Well, I think, you know, the, the old saying, healthy body, healthy mind, it, it works both ways. There is a lot that we can unlock. I mean, there are hormones that need to be in the right place. There are neurotransmitters, serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine. These, these neurotransmitters need to be in the right place. As we right. age, we lose the function of these hormones and neurotransmitters. Um, we don't place enough emphasis on them. The more emphasis we place on them, all right, the more successful you're going to be because you're going to think better. So every right. entrepreneur... Every entrepreneur should be following a protocol, all right, to improve their mental state, their physical state, and how they, how their bodies address stress. Right. And Brand, so this is, this is also something that I, I found odd in the beginning was you speaking to me about my hormones. You know, I know of hormones, and I know that, uh, that my wife has hormones because I see it once a month. But I didn't know that I had, had hormones that were impor important as well. I never thought about that. So just talk to us about the, you know, the hormonal uh, component in men, especially men in business, because there's a specific component to that which I'm really interested in, and that's got to do with manhood and going out there and fighting battles. Yeah. So this is going to get us into trouble, but let's continue. <laughs> um, there is a, a fundamental hormone in men um, that's received a lot of con con controversial arguments. Um, and this right. is the, the component of free testosterone in, in the male body, not total testosterone, free and available testosterone. We know testosterone depletes as we age, as men. There is this assumption that this is okay. It doesn't have to be that way. If you're looking for an optimized life, we know the huge benefits of testosterone. We know the benefits on the heart. We know the benefits um, on the prostate. We know the benefits on the mind. It is important that men are men. And it's important that we go out there and we protect our families and we protect our businesses and we live that lifestyle. It is a huge proponent of living a healthy life, you know, uh, testosterone plays a fundamental role in collagen production, amongst many other things. But we're talking yep. about hormone replacement therapy, and that's important to know the difference. It's a medical hormonal replacement therapy for men who are lacking, based on their tests, the amount of free right. testosterone. Right. And what's interesting about that hormone, and I didn't realize this when you started sort of speaking to me about it, was that Every, every man has a specific level that it should be at. It's a unique level for you as a person. It's not, it's not something we could just uh, put an average to and say that's what it should be around there, around those numbers that when you're fine. Am I right about that? 
Well, yeah, it's a, it's a very difficult process because at the end of the day, every every man is different. Everybody has different levels. Um, and it's really a trial and error process. And a lot of doctors are now seeing that, that it is really a trial and error process. Um, it is a difficult one to get right, but, you know, that's where the word biohacking comes in. It's that self-optimization, yeah. testing where you feel comfortable, where you feel good, and obviously retesting to make sure, you know, that you don't have, you know, a rise in, in, in the red cell counts or these kind of things, and just being clever and smart about it, working with medical professionals. Uh, there's some great options out there, you know, for, for people. And, and around yeah. that, also putting a lot of emphasis on the neurotransmitters. You know, brain function, neurogenesis, plasticity, this is essential. So you, you not only need to optimize the hormones, but you need to optimize the neurotransmitters in the brain as well. Put a lot of focus on that. There are some incredible studies out there that can show you the benefits of, of you know, phosphatidylchlorine, phosphatidylcholine, improving self-variability in the brain. It's some fantastic stuff. People just don't have time to do the research. So that's why we open right. these clinics. <laughs> right. We're here to got it. people. I, I got it. Um, so, so another interesting thing about your clinic is, and I want you to talk about that. I walked in a couple of weeks ago, and there were red lights in the in the ceiling, and I felt like I was in a tanning salon. So, talk to talk, talk to us about that innovation in your clinic. I know it's the only clinics in the in the country that have that. It might be a, a worldwide phenomena, but talk yes. about that. So we do. We we, we own intellectual property for that in South Africa. Um, soon to be in the world. We are working on that at the moment. Um, so low level lab laser um, is, is a form of what we call bio light medicine. So it's an incredible new science that's coming out on specific wavelengths uh, between 650 and 850. Um, it's actually manufactured really in one factory in the world for a special company in the United States. They're very, very expensive. But these lights, they produce incredible results for people. They drive up mitochondrial function, produce higher amounts of adenosine triphosphate or ATP energy conversion. They reduce anxiety. They reduce depression. They provide neuroenhancement, neurogenesis. They help, you know, brain function. They reduce inflammation in the body. Um, so I came up with this idea. Why not? Put them in facilities where people can train under them and, and get the sort of anti-aging component while you train. Um, Love it. I don't know why I would come up with such a ridiculous idea, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, people, well, we, we right. had, had some surgeons that have come back to us and they said that their patients who are with us, their healing capacity is unbelievable. Wow. Um, and, and they're wow. really yeah, they're really impressed. So we're very right. excited um, to, to put this forward, you know, uh, to the world to show people the benefits of, of you know, biolite medication and, and, and yep. photomedicine, um, some some incredible stuff and some really new science that we're, we're pushing out there. We also have uh, Mr. Prof. Dutoy, um, very well known professor in South Africa. He's actually doing the study of this, and we're going to. We're going to do some heavy research and push the science out there to the community. Love it. Love it. So, so Brandon, um, you know, every time I speak to you, I'm blown away by, by you know, all the, all the medical terms and all the knowledge and so forth. I want to, I'm interested in how do you simplify that for your customers? Because obviously it's a simple, a simple process when they come to the clinic. They don't have to know all of this, and that's what I like about it. But talk to me about the process of the, the day one, starting, starting with new, new human cl transformation clinics. What, what does that look like? I mean, so currently in, in the clinics, we have individuals who are trained by um, our doctors um, on cell biology and all the testing that we provide. We, we call these uh, ladies and gents uh, biohackers. So these biohackers right. or, or individuals who are interested in self-optimization are there to educate people or in, in a layman type of way, you know, to help them understand what we do here um, and what it's all about. Um, and of course, um, to level with them on, on their level and, um, and, and run through the process with them. Um, we have some highly educated 
people here. Um, and of course, as I mentioned, you know, success is a team effort. You know, we have such an incredible team here. Um, and, and these people all love saving lives and helping people. So for us, it's really just a, a, a good flow. We, we like to level with people. Nobody's better than anybody else um, in this world. It, it's all about raising people up. Okay, got it. So, because uh, I, I mean, one of the things I've, I've noticed in, in, in your clinics is it's 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 easy to be part of it. It's easy to start to, to to get going because you've simplified the process so much. It's almost a case of just shut up and listen, and 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 we'll change your life. And <laughs> and that's what I like. You know, for an entrepreneur, it does it makes a lot of decisions during the day and has to make a lot of decisions during the day. So what I like about it is I can just come there and I just shut up and I do my job and I leave. And things start changing. So I, I love that process. Well, that's just, I mean, that's just, I mean, the thing is, we've done the scientific research. We, if you want to, if you want to see the science, you can go to our web page. But we've done the scientific research, um, and we assure people that we're, we're on the frontier. You know, we're we're getting information directly from the USA, directly from the top doctors in the world, um, and you know, come in and, and and follow the process. We have some provided to. So, so that's easy for you. Life is complicated as it is. It's a, a tragic story for most people. So, you know, just let's just simplify it and get you positive um, and understand right. what that means, um, you know, to live a positive and successful day, you know. Yes, yes. <laughs> Brandon, the other thing that I that I've picked up at the at the clinic is a lot of a lot of ladies, especially, um, find it really difficult to go to the gym, especially if they're overweight and, and they don't feel well, you know, feel good about themselves. And, and your environment somehow creates a, a safe space. Just talk about the design of that, you know, because uh, someone must have thought about that and it was specifically designed like that. If I know you that well, then I think it was part of the plan. So, you know, what what was that? Yeah. So. First of all, I, we we have somebody that teaches our staff about ethics, okay, um, specifically medical ethics. So this is fundamental when you're working with people that are struggling with an eating disorder. You need to know how to deal with them. So we have a professor that trains every single one of our staff, every single one, on medical ethics. All right. All right. So this is the first step. Our staff know how to treat people, you know, in a in a in a in a safe and effective manner. Okay. Right. Because we do have people that come here that are that struggle with obesity and, and eating problems and hormonal problems and cancer and heart disease and all these other potential diseases. So we we have trained our staff, you know, to understand what that means. Inside the facilities, right. we have a very specific routine that we follow. Each day, we have, we've built something special around each day of the week. I don't want to give too much away, um, but each day there's something very special that you can connect with. And yes. the environment that we've built is an environment of calm and peace and positivity. Um, you will never come here and find no positivity. We believe that how we think creates the universe we live in. So, and if 90% of disease starts in the mind and manifests in the body, the way you think has a high probability of healing you. Absolutely. Love so we really love promote it. that in a very special way now without giving too much love. Love it. Brennan, then also, um, I know you, you're very busy at the moment with the expansion of the business and the future of the business. And I'm really interested in, in those opportunities. I mean, I work with entrepreneurs who are always looking for new opportunities. And I know you have some opportunities around franchises. So speak about that because I know you've built a model that, that you know, is, is, is really well built for the franchise envi environment. Tell us about, you know, what, what the franchise, franchise is and how, how can we get involved? Yeah, so we, we, have, a, we have an unbelievable team um, that's involved with our franchising. Um, Shout out to Level Up, great company, um, working very hard with us uh, to, to implement the processes. Um, <clears throat> we're registered with FASA, that's the Franchise Association of South Africa. That's a very big step, which I would recommend other entrepreneurs do if they're interested in franchising. Um, we have a, a brilliant model 
we we build these clinics and we provide you with everything inside them and your trained staff and we keep them up to date. Um, so if you're looking for an investment, uh, this is very new and frontier science. We welcome people. We do obviously sit down and have a conversation to see where these potential entrepreneurs' visions are at. So um, yes, the model is, is growing and it's growing fast. We now have um, Vitality on board who are very interested on you know in our processes and what we're doing and the type of health and, and the type of lives we're improving. And if you want to know a little bit more about that, there is a section on our web page um, about, about our franchise opportunities. Um, we are selective about that, so we are looking for people that are interested, you know, in health and wellness and in changing the world. Love it. Love it. All right, Brandon. So um now that we know what you do and how well you do it, I'm really interested in your, in your story of how you got here. Now, I'll ask all entrepreneurs this. And you had an interesting answer this morning when we prepared and you said, Kevin, I don't know how I got here, which is, I think the normal answer for most entrepreneurs is, I don't know how this all happened, but it did. So talk to us about your life story in, in, in 10 or 15 minutes on how you got here. How, how, did, how did this all happen? Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, once again, um, uh, it, it started with very little and a massive vision, a massive dream. There's, right. there's no doubt. Um, and and I was, I've always been a person who's really focused on visualization, you know, envisioning where I want to be and where I want to go. Hence the words future self, health, and wealth, which I use quite often uh, with, with right. people. Um, I started. The Newman process after I was bankrupt for the second time. Um, and it was a hard lesson to learn. Um, and I was I was quite young then, so it was it was a difficult lesson. But I started with very little. Uh, to be very honest with you, it was physically very little. And then if I can call it a, a literally a three meter by three meter clinic. <laughs> Right. When I, uh, I didn't have electricity, so I had to literally drive my car in, <laughs> into the bed of flowers, <laughs> which I, I think the landlord was still upset about, and shine the lights through the wind, through the windows so that we could have some early morning lights. Wow. Light. wow. No air conditioning. Um, and I had no music, so we had to listen from my cell phone. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Um, beginnings. And till this day, I still go there and I reminisce where it started from because it, it keeps me level headed, it um, keeps me humble. Uh, it, it started with very little. And as it progressed, um, I, I followed the vision all the time. Okay. And, right. and whatever I did in my life, had to be in congruence with the vision all the time. Whatever decision I made, however I thought about it, I always had the vision in mind. Um, and right. I honestly believe that we don't believe much in what I call the reticular activating system, the RA system of the brain. This is a filter system. Let me give you a good example. You're driving around and you see you notice a beautiful car for the first time. And then for the next week, you see that car everywhere. All right. This is the same thing that happens in a crowded room when somebody shouts out your name and you can hear it above all the noise. All right. So the RA system is a filter system. If you keep your vision right. in front of you, your brain is going to filter out all the unnecessary bits. Yeah. Okay. And that's why people in the work environment are tripping in. If they read or, or, or employees, if they believe they're bad at their job and they're told they're bad at their job, they're going to start seeing why they are bad at their job. This is a right. major problem, a fundamental problem, okay, in business. If your vision is ahead of you, you're going to filter out all the unnecessary bits. Keep the vision clean, clear, crystal clear. Whether you can smell it, see it, taste it, it must be very, very clear and follow that vision. And of course, right. 
along the way, given in my journey, I've had, and I'll share something very personal with you today. I've had four, four people that have said something profound to me that raised my awareness about building a business. Because you and I both know it's an incredible struggle to up-regulate a business, to expand, to grow. This is the biggest fundamental problem in entrepreneurs. How do we do it? How do we get bigger, you know, with all the problems that come from that? And, yep. and there were four people that played a role in where we are today, that played a role in this expansion. And the first person, um, and I'm going to mention names, Lurika Schubert, um, director of uh, Atterbury Motors, South Africa. We sat down. I said to her, Lurika, I, how did you get so big? What do I need to do? And she said to me, Brandon, you need to stop working in your business and start working on your business. Absolutely. That was profound because I was always working in my business and I had to work on my business. And when I made that decision, already some great things started happening. The second woman happens to be a woman as well, director of a company called Paxton Server, Wanda Wolf, brilliant businesswoman. And I was going through an emotional patch at this time and I was doing some business with her business. And she said to me, Brandon, always remember, not every lesson is made for you. And wow. that was incredible because I was quite emotional and that swung my mindset 180 and I left there really positive, realizing that sometimes in life, you know, the lesson isn't made for you. It's made for somebody else. Right. The third lesson wow. came from my wife. Um, and this is when the business, you know, we were going through some difficult times trying to figure it out. Um, and we were looking at a friend of ours who was struggling with bankruptcy. We're trying to learn from this lesson, figure out why did this happen? Because, you know, that's what being a businessman is all about. You've got to learn lessons. You've got to remain teachable. And, yeah. and we were trying to figure out why this happened so we could learn from it. And we realized that it's never really one poor decision that ends up in bankruptcy. It's a series of poor decisions that you're not learning from, you know. Right. And you need right. to remain teachable. And when you're teachable, you will grow. All right. Love and, and the Love fourth hardest lesson, which I'm still trying to accept to this day, <laughs> was actually from uh, Tim Ferriss. He's the author of uh, Two of Titans, brilliant book. And he said that, or he wrote in his book, that if you cannot leave your business alone for three months without everything going to hell, you're self-employed, you're not an yes. entrepreneur. Yes. Yeah. I love it. So, so I started then focusing on the optimization of my staff, my employees, and really put a lot of effort into optimizing their brains, their minds, their neurotransmitters, their health, you know, and their wealth. I started optimizing their lives. And that process, I mean, I, could, I, I cannot explain to you the rewards. I have a brilliant team of people. Amazing, amazing. And Brian, that's something that, uh, that I live for too. And some, some of the topics we discuss on Take a Seat TV as well is not, you know, wealth and wellness is not only meant for entrepreneurs. It's also meant for employees. I believe that even on, uh, employees can become wealthful human beings inside a business. And it's interesting, you know, when I look at your employees, I see, I see people who are wealthful human beings. And, and wealth is a term that I use that it's a whole human being, someone who understands that he, uh, he is a productive human being. He can amass wealth, but he's also healthy. He also looks after his family. He looks after the community and has goals in place, financial goals as well as career goals. And so just talk a little bit about employees because, you know, a lot of times we are bombarded by entrepreneurial thought. And I believe not, not all people are called to be entrepreneurs. Uh, it, it's, a, it's an absolute calling. And, but I believe there are people that should be employees and you should be great employees because 
in my world, whoever whoever solves the biggest problem in my business is the is the best paid best paid employee. And if you can teach an employee how to solve the biggest problem, then you'll become a wealthy per- person. So, you know, what what's your view on employ on employment uh, versus entrepreneurship? So I spend a lot of mo- so so I I have this process in my life where I I I give energy to respective parts of my life, okay? Um, and, and that's important because I need to know where my energy is going, all right? Because I can't give all my energy to everyone. But what I can tell you is I give most of my energy to my lowest paid employees. I really do. Love it. Love it. And, and I spend time with them. I sit down with them. I communicate with them. I ask them, how can I make their lives better? What can I do for them? What are their energy levels like? Do they have enough energy? How's their family doing? Are they emotional? How's their stress levels? What can I implement in my business to reduce their stress? You know, but I communicate, yeah, I communicate more with my employees who are the lowest paid than the ones who are highest paid. Because they are, they are the fundamental people in your business. They need to be optimized. Because from there, the ripple effect is incredible. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah. So I also try and integrate a system where there is very little hierarchy. This is a personal thing. I want everybody to feel like they're contributing equally to this company. I don't want one person to have to deal with somebody above them all the time. They can come straight to me and talk to me about any problem that they have. And I'll gladly listen because their lives are spent improving this business. And they're just as important as everybody else. Right. There's almost yeah. a case if you look after your people, they'll look after your business. That, that's the view. Absolutely. And I, I think there should be, in, 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 and this is why I love the concept that you you brought up early on that you're busy implementing, um, you called it second life or, or half, what did you call yes. it? Second life, the second life, yes. yeah. So, so I love that because, you know, a lot of times, I, I think it's important that when you employ people, you need to look at their age and where they are in their lives, you know? I mean, a lot of women go through a very difficult time in their life with menopause, perimenopause, you know, post menopause, that plays a lot on neurotransmitter function in the brain, their health and wellness, you know, um, how they're feeling, their anxiety, their depression. So there should be in every business, we sh- there should be implementing, you know, uh, an, an access point where, where these people have access to somebody that can improve, enhance them, and optimize them and make them feel better in the work environment. There is no doubt about it. Um, and, and, and that's why I love that concept because there should be more focus um, from entrepreneurs on their employees with regard to upregulating them and, and, and optimizing them. Definitely. Right. Good. Brandon, so let's talk about the future of New Human. Like, uh, I know you're going to take over the world. Um, what's, what's that going to look like? What's, what's, what's the 100 year plan for New Human? So I, I, the vision is to, to provide, you know, a platform going forward where people who are in, are in trouble, people who are struggling with life, you know, psychologically, physically, just in a really bad space, will always have a place to go to, a home that will take them in and that will really help them rebuild their lives. Um, the vision is big, Kevin. It's very big. Um, I'm implementing. I'm, in, I'm implementing work with, um, you know, psychologists, psychiatrists, um, thoracic surgeons, scientists. The world needs to have better people in it. I think the biggest lesson that I've learned in COVID, in the lockdown, is that people need people. Right. And and we can't do without it. And the current yeah, we state, need yeah, we need each other. And the current state of, 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 of 
the, the current mental state of human beings is very poor. People are suffering. Right. They're struggling and they need help. The long-term view is to save lives, to save these people, to help them, to give them a place where we can bring them back into society and really change their lives, really make them better because a better world requires better people. Absolutely. Love it. Love the concepts. Brandon, so yeah, that's been a really interesting chat with you. Um, I'm, as, as you know, I'm always inspired by your conversations and overwhelmed by, you know, everything I'm, I still need to learn about my body and my mind. Um, and I think uh, a lot of people can benefit from these discussions. Um, so uh, thank you very much for your time. You are an amazing entrepreneur. We're going to spend some more time. And as I, I, know we, I I'm going to say that now, it's, it might be premature, but uh, We've uh, decided, as you know, to join in a partnership and we're going to launch that two weeks from now around this concept of your second life, not only your health, but also your, your business and your career. And I think it's going to be such a, a valuable uh, thing for, for people who are in that period of their life between 45 and 50 year olds. But yeah, thank you for your time. Uh, I appreciate it. I know it's an hour of your, of your busy day. Thank you so much. And I hope the best for your future. Kevin, it's, it's, it's been a... An absolute honor. Thank you for having me. I, I really look forward to our synergy together and, and building new platforms. Um, thank you for the person that you are and for what you're providing to the public. I think it's important. People need to know. Um, I send you much love and gratitude. And may you too be blessed in your journey. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks very much.